Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Fahmi Sanani. I'm a consultant neurologist, and today we'll be talking about the mini mental status examination. The outline of today's discussion would be the introduction of dementia and cognitive impairment, the presentation of the mini mental status examination, the norms and biases of the mini mental status examination, the use of the mini mental status examination as a screening tool for cognitive impairment. Our learning outcomes, at the end of this lecture, we, you should be able to review the appropriate usages, advantages, and potential pitfalls of the mini mental status examination, identify which patients are suitable for the mini mental status examination, and screen patients for cognitive impairment through the mini mental status examination. What is the definition of dementia? How prevalent is dementia in Saudi Arabia? What is the concept of MCI, or mild cognitive impairment? What are the risk factors of Alzheimer's disease? So the general term dementia has been renamed to major neurocognitive disorder in DSM-5 and soon in ICD-11. However, the term dementia may still be used as an acceptable alternative and is still widely used. The current definition includes evidence of significant cognitive decline with associated interference in the dependence of the patient's activities of daily living. If you look at prevalence of dementia worldwide, it has increased significantly, but in Saudi Arabia, we don't have very good statistics with respect to prevalence. If you look at the major risk factor for dementia, age is the number one risk factor, where you can see that in patients 95 to 99 years of age, over half of them are demented. There are many different types of dementia, Alzheimer's disease being the most common form of dementia, where vascular dementia, frontal temporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, traumatic brain injury, dementia associated with substance abuse and medication uh, overuse, HIV infection, prion disease, mainly Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, Parkinson's disease associated dementia, Huntington's disease associated dementia, normal pressure hydrocephalus, and multiple other unspecified and unspecified etiologies are different types of dementia. What is mild cognitive impairment or MCI? There are specific criteria that are changing with time as we learn more about mild cognitive impairment. But generally, it is a condition with altered cognition where the person is still completely independent in his activities of, of daily living and the patient is not uh, demented. What is the continuum of dementia? As we age, our cognitive function slowly declines, and people that eventually develop dementia have a preclinical phase, follow, followed by a mild cognitive impairment, followed by dementia as time goes by. In summary, age is the strongest risk factor for developing Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. With the aging Saudi population, dementia screening should be considered a priority. Dementia must interfere with independence and other activities of daily living, while mild cognitive impairment activities of daily living and functional abilities are preserved. And there is a need to accurately assess and administer a tool to screen the elderly to look for dementia. The mini mental status examination is a very good tool for screening and it consists of 30 items that can be done in generally 10 minutes. The tool consists of 30 questions or 30 points and it covers many cognitive domains including orientation, registration, attention and calculation, recall, language and constructive praxis. Orientation consists of 10 points, and this is assessed by asking the patient the correct year, season, month, day of the month, and day of the week. These questions allow testing of episodic memory, 
but also of semantic memory. When we look at orientation to place, this consists of five points, and the subject must specify the name and the location, one point each for the state that he's in, the county, the town, the building, and the floor. This mainly tests episodic memory and explores the orientation in the immediate area, as well as the name of the state and county, which looks at semantic memory. Registration is a three-point scale, and the patient is given three objects to remember and should repeat them immediately. The choice of words are variable. They must not be too close semantically or phonetically and have the same length in the language. An example would be ball, glass, and the color red. The objective is to test the subject's ability to register new information. The next part of the tool is calculation, and this consists of five points. And the patient is asked to do serial sevens or subtract seven points from 100. And the person stops after five answers with one point awarded for each correct answer. Alternatively, the person could spell the word world backwards, and one point is given for each letter spelled correctly. This task is complex because it evaluates simultaneous attention and calculation functions, but also working memory. The aim of the test is to maintain an interfering spot between registration before and the recall after the three words. Going back to recall, this is a good time to ask the patient to recall the three objects that were memorized. And the person is asked to recall the three objects that were previously mentioned with one point given to each correct answer. This is as his verbal short-term memory that is altered frequently in Alzheimer's disease. The next test is to, text, to test praxis, and the person is asked to copy the following design of horizontal overwrapping uh, pentagons. And the score is given as done very well, well, or poorly. Language is looked into an eight-point section with naming, repetition, following three stage commands, reading as well as writing. Naming, the patient is asked to look at the wristwatch and asked, what is this called? And then this is repeated with a pencil and the patient is given one point for each correct item. Repetition, the patient is asked to repeat no ifs, ands, or buts and is given a one point for complete uh, repetition of the phrase. Then the patient is given a three-stage command, and this is done one time only verbally, where you ask the patient to take a piece of paper in the right hand, fold it in half, and place it on the floor. And this is not repeated um, during uh, the patient taking the paper and folding it. The next uh, part of the language examination is reading, and the patient is given a piece of paper showing the word close your eyes and the person is not coaxed or uh, mimicked to answer the question. The next point is writing and the patient is asked to write a complete uh, sentence and the sentence must, must contain a subject and a verb. The interpretation of the mini mental status score uh, is easy and ranges from 0 to 30 but they cut off of 24 to detect cognitive impairment, but not to make a formal diagnosis. And this generally has a sensitivity of 87% and a specificity of 82%. Subjects with score of less than 24 should be further evaluated for dementia or cognitive impairment. And scores of 24 to 30 cannot exclude dementia. What are the norms and biases of the mini mental status examination? We will discuss the origins of the mini mental status examination, how to administer a mini mental status examination, who can administer a mini mental status examination, what are the factors associated with its interpretation, and what are the biases and limitations of the mini mental status examination. 
So historically, it was developed by Mr. Folstein and his wife and was published in 1975. And it was originally designed to distinguish neurological from psychological uh, patients. It is a widely used test for cognitive impairment. The mini mental status examination is a standardized tool that could provide qualitative data for comparison between patients to track cognitive changes that can occur to a given patient. There's no specific equipment requ required to do the test. It takes about 10 minutes to admi administer a full mini mental status examination. And it's not necessary to be assessed by a mental care professional. It could be administered by any physician, nurse, or healthcare professional after a short amount of training. Some of the factors that must be looked at when looking at the score of the mini mental status examination includes the age of the patient, where patients that are young do very well, and elderly patients can be expected to lose a few points for age. Another factor that must be considered when interpreting the mini mental status examination is the educational level of the patient with lower educational levels associated with lower mean scores on the mini mental status examination. Other factors that should be in included are language. Um, as all cognitive tests, mini mental status, status, mini mental state examination should be used in the native language and the mini mental status examination was translated in Arabic and validated for the Saudi population. What are other biases that can induce, that can influence the mini mental status examination? These include affective disorders such as depression, the interview conditions like anxiety, disturbed vigilance of the patient, and impaired sensory um, inputs like vision and hearing disorders. How reliable is the mini mental status examination? It has a very high inter-observer reliability with a mean kappa value of 0 0.97. There's a high retest reliability with a high reli reliability even in demented patients with one to five point possible point change in cognitively intact individuals. In summary, the mini mental status examination is a very attractive examination because it's brief, it's easily administered, and can be easily scored. Age, education level, and severe psychological factors may influence the mini mental status score. The mini mental status examination assesses cognitive performance at the time of the interview and not only the patient's competence. A lower score is not specific to any cognitive pathology. Who is the target population for the mini mental status score? It's useful to perform in the elderly who appear cognitively intact. Does a low score mean dementia? Is there still a role for mini mental status examination screen in elderly Alzheimer's disease? This screening tool for cognitive impairment is excellent for the elderly population either in community dwelling, primary care, hospitalized, or institutionalized patients, and all populations with memory or cognitive impairments. The mini mental status examination is a diagnostic tool of dementia. It's equivalent to a physical examination. If cognitive impairment was suspected by a low mini mental status examination score less than 24, it's recommended to refer the patients for further neuropsychological testing and specific memory disorder consultation. The association of the mini mental status examination score and dementia, it's generally the first part of the assessment for demented patients. The MMSE is much more sensitive to, to detect dementia presenting with predominant memory impairment like Alzheimer's disease than those with other memory disorders like frontal degeneration or vascular dementia. Screening for the elderly and the role of the mini mental status examination. In the study done by Benson and others, where they took 86 subjects, 25 were normal elderly controls, 26 had mild cognitive impairment, 
10 had mild Alzheimer's disease, and 25 subjects had depression. The mini mental status examination effectively separated those that had Alzheimer's disease from the other three groups, and the mild cognitive impairment group from normal aging. So the mini mental status examination is relatively ineffective in separating normal elderly individuals from those that had depression, and individuals with MCI from those that had depression. The severity and follow-up evaluation, the mini mental status examination is a useful tool for dementia follow-up to track cognitive changes that occur with time. In Alzheimer's disease patients, the mini mental status examination score correlates with disability degree and the number of senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles seen on pathology. The stages of Alzheimer's disease analysis of consortium to establish a registry of Alzheimer's disease data, where you can see mild, moderate, and severe Alzheimer's disease based on CRAD, and the mini mental status examination was highly correlated. When you look at the mini mental status examination and the staging of the severity of Alzheimer's disease, you also see that MCI, mild, moderate, and severe Alzheimer's disease have lowering scores on the mini mental status examination. In summary, the mini mental status examination is a very good screening tool for cognitive impairment and should be used systematically for elderly subjects. It could be administered in all settings, neurology, geriatric, psychiatric, and family medicine practices. It's a useful tool to follow the evolution of a given patient and has a role in appreciating severity of dementia. In conclusion, dementia prevalence increases with age. Dementia screening should be done for the elderly Saudi population. The mini mental status examination is a practical tool for evaluating cognitive status and screening cognitive impairment. The MMSE is not a diagnostic tool for dementia. The take home message is a mini mental status examination is equivalent to a physical exam. It should be applied by all healthcare professionals in all settings for the elderly. The MMSE is a screening tool, but not an etiological test for differential diagnosis of dementia. The mini mental status examination should not replace a complete neuropsychological assessment of cognitive impairment, and age, educational level, and severe psychological factors may influence the mini mental status score and should be considered in interpreting the examination results. And thank you very much for listening.